Hi, today we are going to see one more topic from Informatica that is error handling. Already we have seen about the error handling user defined exceptions and today we are going to see non fatal exceptions and fatal exceptions. Before going into this uh, topic uh, non fatal exceptions, we are going to see one uh, last thing from the user defined exceptions that is how to log the errors with the relational tables by using the user defined error tables actually error handling functions are easy to implement with very less coding efforts but at the same time there are some disadvantages such as the readability of the error records from the PM ERR table and the performance impact see what's happening over here is here in this session property we have already seen about the error logging I will show you the things now there is one const yeah, here error handling is there in the error handling in the error log type we normally choose none that means all the errors will be we can see it in the error log that is the session log all the errors will be logged in the session log but if you want to keep track of the errors you can have all the errors to be logged in a particular table if you use the error log type as relational database then the error log db connection you have to choose that means you have to configure one db connection and you have to keep that db connection over here that means the username and the password everything you need to configure by using the connection object that is available over here after that you have to give the error log table name prefix if you give like this what will happen if you run the session that errors will be logged into the system generated error log tables and now let we will see what will happen if we run the session here I have already created one map this map we have already seen this is the a map which fetches the record from the department table and transferred into the target department table the target is also the having the same columns only so that is the target table tgt underscore dept and here we are checking for the error whether the department name is null or not if it is null means we are logging the error otherwise department name will be written here I have already given one default value that we have seen in the user driven exceptions already. Now I am refreshing the map and saving it. Remember that we have changed the error lock type to relational database. Let me see what is happening now. okay and uh, the data will be in the target there is no need to check it if you want we can check our intention is to know about the okay the already it has got loaded so no issues our intention is to check the error log tables first uh, let me will refresh it and we will disconnect and we will reconnect it here we need to check for the tables where it has got created and it has got created the system uh, that means the tables got created here there are around four tables has got created one is pm error underscore data and pm error underscore message underscore session and underscore trans now if we check from the PM error message sorry ETL underscore we can see the error message logged over here the transformation had an error evaluating an error messages log over here this is the system generated 
error logging tables. What is the problem over here is the readability. We cannot maintain it as a centralized error logging. We, we cannot have a centralized error logging mechanism. Mechanism. So we need to re-modify it. In real-time environment, we cannot have this uh, relational tables, this type of relational tables. The, and also it create some performance impact. To avoid the disadvantages of error handling function, we need to create our own error logging tables and capture the error records into it. So we can create our own error logging tables like this and we can have one two more flags like error fixed flag and processor flag. Using these things we can easily see whether the error got fixed or processed. Whatever the status we can update it over here. Okay. This is the sample of the error logging table, the user defined error log tables. That these things are a system generated error logging tables. These are all the PRR uh, data session trans and message. We can use this, but there will be difficulty in reading and uh, the uh, whether uh, we don't know uh, whether the particular error has got fixed or not. If you want to have the complete centralized error logging mechanism, means better create the error log tables on our own and we can log the errors into the particular table. Now let we will see some non-fatal exceptions. Non-fatal exceptions causes the records to be dropped out in the ETL process which is critical to ca quality. We can handle the non-fatal exceptions by using default port value setting, row error logging and error handling settings. These are all the three ways available. First we will see about default port value setting. Already we have seen one default port value setting in the user defined exception. If uh, the incoming value is null means we can give one default value. So the default value overrides the error error message. So that error message will be there in spite of that that uh, default value will be uh, stored in the uh, target database. So there is no need to worry about the error message. So default value overrides the error uh, that uh, error handling. Using default value property is a good way to handle the exceptions due to null values and unexpected transformation errors. The designer assigns default values to handle null values on output transformation errors so that we can override the default value in, in input, output and input slash output ports. We can use the default values if you do not want the integration service to treat the null value as null means in input ports we can use this default value and user defined exception we have seen in the output ports. Now the, the way in which we have to handle both input and output port is the same one. We have to give the default value in that particular port. For example if you want to give the default value over here we can specify it like here you have to open one quotation and you can give the default value if it is a character if it is a character data type you can give quotation and you can give a data type input port means let's come accordingly here uh, input and output port is there if you remove it is a input port then input port we can give the default value here likewise it will change okay this is the way you have to specify the default value in input and output ports and the row error logging row error logging is the thing what we have seen now about the error log type the relational database that means everything will be captured in the system generated error logging tables given by the informatica itself so that we can store our errors and it is the perfect way of capturing any unexpected errors. Okay, this is already we have seen about how to uh, set the properties and how to handle the error log type and how to run and check in the table. That is the table generated in the Oracle. We have already seen about it. Okay, this is the row error logging and error handling settings 
error handling properties at the session level is given with the options such as stop on errors on store procedure error pre session command task error and post sql error pre and post sql error stop on error means it indicates how many non fatal errors the integration service can encounter before it stops the session that means if we if we specify the number 2 here the session property is there an error handling is the option available over here log option is there here in stop on errors 0 we have given okay if we give one at the first error itself it will stop the session here we need to handle the errors explicit explicitly here if we give the stop on error as 1 at the first error itself the session will be stopped if we give two up to one error it won't stop at the second error the session will be stopped here the session won't be stopped on error if we give zero this is a default and we can give any numbers according to the requirement and so many things are there stored procedure whenever we use the stored procedure we can use it and pre and post sql error also similar things only all default will be stop only and we can change it according to our requirement if there is any error we want to continue means we can give post sql error continue then it uh, it won't stop the session but this is the way you should handle the error by using the error handling settings okay and uh, we will see about the fatal exceptions later